expected more from the great oh, That's about how it goes every time. I try, I try again, and I try a few more times until I finally get it. It's hard, but it forces me to re-strategize and hooks me with that just one more feeling. But would you believe we almost got a game the devs didn't even want to play? Frank here. We are watching a game show. Let's talk about Doom Eternal. There's no denying Doom is a brutal game. Hell, that's the premise. But Eternal feels like something much different than its 2016 prequel. Game director Hugo Martin says the studio had very little turnover, so from the very beginning, we were able to hit the ground running as a team that felt fantastic. We were able to do a lot more, a lot faster, and a lot better. And it really does show. A game is phenomenal and has been awarded high praise across pretty much every game and outlet. But past them keeping a great team intact, some smart design changes help elevate Eternal to the next level of hell. Push forward combat and glory kills weren't going to carry us this time. That alone was so original in 2016. Still charming, still fun, but it wasn't enough. This is where the team faced their first hurdle. Martin says they started work on abilities before anything else and immediately realized that with add-ons like the meat hook and dash, it was so quick that nothing could touch you, so you were never really under any kind of duress. This was not the game they wanted to make and it was apparent in their lack of enthusiasm when playtesting. What they wanted to make was a true combat puzzle for people to solve, but it didn't reach this conclusion overnight. It started by looking at why players would have polarizing experiences when running through Doom 2016. This showed that more experienced players understood the mechanics of weapon switching and playing aggressively, and others who spent less time with first-person shooters found ways to exploit the game, like using only one weapon, which ended up cheapening their overall experience. Realizing this was their fault, the team started looking at ways of forcing the player into their fun zone style of gameplay. They didn't want to make a hard game, they wanted to give you something to master, something you felt was truly earned. They started by speeding up attack animations. Sure, it didn't look as great, but they're more responsive, so they feel better. On top of that, enemies were beefed up to hit harder with specific weak points to actually feel like threats that must be intelligently dealt with, creating something that's both fun on the outside and a smart on the inside. It's all about player education. Whether it's the ding of hitting a weak point or the color of a necessary pickup, the key to keeping players coming back for more is that you have to feel like the game didn't screw you over. You messed up. If you know it's on you, you're highly motivated to go back. Eternal's new approach to combat takes that mantra and regardless of what difficulty you choose, challenges the player to learn and master the gameplay. They don't mind you hitting the frustrating points because they're tuned that way to push you back into the fun zone. Although, none of the work they put into overhauling the combat would mean a thing if the player didn't have a great arena to use it in. The level design had to get deeper, otherwise you're banging up against the walls. But at the same time, if the level was too big, the player felt slow. It all became about nailing the feel of the spaces. They don't want players to hide in the corner. That's not how you have fun. Instead, the level forces you to constantly evaluate whether to jump, dash, steer clear of pitfalls, or look out for traps, all while taking on an ever-pressing onslaught of enemies. The team also knew it was just as important to make sure the spaces between the arenas were just as compelling, if not more compelling. So these spaces are packed full of platforming and environmental puzzles, which give the player a fun breather from the ever-present Doom that is only a key card away. This is why Doom Eternal is receiving rave reviews and how it sets itself apart from predecessors. 
with a team that didn't coast on Doom 2016 success and instead worked to actually innovate and make the game a masterpiece. But as you learned, it didn't come easy if it wasn't for critical feedback, constant evaluations, and never-ending playtesting, you probably wouldn't have the amazing title that we've got today. I expected more from the Great Slayer. Thanks for watching. As always, we hope you enjoyed. Please uh, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> I'm begging ya. If you really liked it, you could consider subscribing, throwing us a thumbs up, or better yet, sharing it with someone who might dig it. I'm Frank. This is a game show. We'll see you again soon.